Yeah, a 10. Okay. I actually, you gave me a 1 to 10. I put it in a 15. I may okay. even put it in a 20. Right. Good. This is a perfect situation for Russ. I said it a week or so ago when we first learned that he would be on the move. The first thing I said was Pittsburgh is a perfect situation because you have a coach in Mike Tomlin a lot like Pete Carroll, right? He's got to manage the entire situation on the sidelines. He can speak to the quarterbacks, the defensive players, just like Pete did. This is not Sean Payton. This is not a coach that has such high demand of the quarterback, had played quarterback himself before, uh, and, and been in these situations, had Drew Brees, just a different mindset as a head coach. Agreed. Where Mike Tomlin is going to talk to him differently, going to respect him coming into the building differently than Sean Payton. Sean Payton had respect for him, but Sean Payton also had one eye open, one eye closed, wasn't going to go all in in this situation. Mike Tomlin signed off on him. So the locker room, there won't be any issues because people respect Mike Tomlin. They'll simply say, coach signed off on him. We're okay with it. Whatever his personality is, we don't worry about it. He's our quarterback. Now, he won't get the starting job just by walking in the building. Mm. It'll be an open competition, wink, wink, at the end of the day. Russell Wilson is better than Kenny Pickett. We all know that. They'll, they'll, they'll let him compete, but in the end, he's the starting quarterback. They got him on the cheap. Think about it. They, they've gone, <clears throat> they've gone out and got Arthur Smith. Arthur Smith has success with Ryan Tannehill back in 2019. Okay, Ryan Tannehill comes over from Miami. He was somewhat of a throwaway, similar to Russell Wilson. He goes, Arthur Smith puts in a situation with the two tight ends, a running game, play action pass a nice defense, and they go on and have success. Now, Arthur Smith is in a situation where he wants to erase the memories that people have of him as a head coach in Atlanta this past couple years, show that he can be an offensive coordinator, show that he can help the Pittsburgh Steelers win a playoff game, something that they had. I didn't even realize this. They hadn't won a playoff game since 2016. They hadn't won a playoff game since 2016. And they've lost three straight since they, in the postseason, when they've gotten there, they've been gone, much like the Dallas Cowboys. They get kicked around, and they get sent home a little early. Yep. Mike Tomlin now has his quarterback to settle things yep. down. It'll be interesting to see how far he could take them because he's got some playmakers. I think within this division, Skip, when you talk about Cincinnati and Joe Burrow, you talk about Deshaun Watson, who just got Jared Judy to help him out offensively, trade from Denver, and then, obviously, Lamar Jackson. This is now that division where you look at the quarterbacks, you go, oh, gosh, you got to be afraid. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Okay. Since I propose scale of 1 to 10, I will cap mine at 10, but I'm going 10 also. And if you want to go 15 or 20, God bless you. <laughs> this is an all-time steal of a deal. They're paying are the Denver Broncos $38 million of this. Yeah. It only cost Pittsburgh $1.2 million, the veteran minimum, to get a quarterback who's been to nine Pro Bowls and two Super Bowls and very, very nearly won both of them, as we know Just what happened. Just ran the ball. Yeah. Okay, well, you can make the case, but... Russ made a nice throw. It just it was the all-time greatest break on the ball I've ever seen by Malcolm Butler, but it came that close to winning that Super Bowl. You got that, and, and I'm going to put in front of his age 35, I'm going to put an only 35 because in this age we live in, after what we saw Tom Brady do at 45, after what we now see LeBron doing at 39, after, heck, for what we see Aaron Rodgers do at 39, I'm going to put an only in front of 35. He is only 35 years of age. Once upon a time, I would have said, you're on the downside. He could still be in his prime at age 35. And he got caught in frankly, the worst possible situation because, you know, Sean, I know Sean, he, as you point out, he coaches the quarterback hard and he could coach Drew Brees hard because Drew Brees was really good and, and tough-minded and ate it up, the hard coaching, and lived up to it and thrived under it. All of a sudden... But he also... <clears throat> yeah. He also brought Drew Brees to well, the He Warriors. did, and it was his guy. It was his, it was his guy. Okay, different, right. different. And, and it's huge. This was not Sean's guy. 
And there are parts of Russ's personality that can be off-putting, that can rub you the wrong way. You can think, well, he's a phony or he's insincere or wh whatever you want to think of him because he is cliche ridden and he's a little corny and it's let's ride Bronco country. And somehow it didn't click because he was making so much money and Sean wanted more that, that Russ wasn't able to give him. And it degenerated into the ugliest sideline incident I think I've ever seen between a coach and a quarterback. And it, it gives me creeps to even look at it now. It gives, it gives me bad chills because it was so ugly. And again, I like Sean. You like Sean. Oh, yeah. But that degenerated into that moment where all, all of his bitterness toward everything Russ just spewed out at that moment and for all the world to see it was on full display and Russ went through a lot last year and I think he got humiliated by the benching because he's star and he's married to a star and he's got star power and because of that I think he's going to come in to Pittsburgh with a little chip on his shoulder. Like, okay, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna start fresh here. I'm gonna get my body even righter than I got it to go to Denver, and here we go. And now we get to Mike Tomlin, and you pointed this out. Mike Tomlin is not an offensive football coach, so he's not going to coach Russ on X's and O's like Arthur Smith will, obviously. But Mike will coach Russ's psyche. He'll put his psyche, yes. he will rebuild his confidence. He'll put him in the right position to succeed. And you say, well, they're a running football team. Well, they were with Kenny Pickett because they really didn't have a lot of choice. And what Pittsburgh tried to do with Kenny Pickett was wh what Green Bay did successfully with Jordan Love because they took a later round, you know, down the bottom of the first round mm -hmm. pick. And Jordan Love looked like he's turned into a star to me. We'll, we'll know more next year. Well, but, Jordan Love yeah. had an opportunity to sit. He did. And wait. Kenny Pickett, Kenny Pickett never got was. thrown into the fire. <clears throat> Kenny Pickett never in my evaluation of him and yeah. Pitt, he had played a lot of football. He had. Okay, he didn't get an opportunity to sit behind a veteran quarterback like an Aaron Rodgers for four years before he got his opportunity. They somewhat were forced into taking him because they needed a quarterback because Ben was at the end, he was done. They needed a quarterback, and the guy that was rated high was Kenny Pickett, who shared the same driveway as the Pittsburgh Steelers players <laughs> because they share yeah. the same facility. They do. So the information that they would get about him is easy. I'm, I see you every day. So it was almost like we had to take you. We see you every day. We fell in love with you for the last four years, and we thought it would work. You're in Pittsburgh. You played in this stadium. You understand the weather. You somewhat understand the Pittsburgh Steelers culture. But in the end... He's just not good enough. Just not good enough. To give them exactly what they needed at the starting back quarterback position. He, he Think not. about it. Over the last yeah. two seasons, they've started three different quarterbacks. They, they, they literally have started three different, whether it was Mason Rudolph, Mitch Trubisky, Kenny Pickett. It's just been like a, 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 a assembly line just mm -hmm. going around and around yep. for Mike Tomlin. Now, Mike Tomlin wants to get back to the winning ways, and I think they can do that because they got two hell of a running backs. They got some receivers. They got some. Okay, they got guys on the defensive side of the ball. And it's not a wide open style offense that they're going to run under Arthur Smith. It's just not. And I think Russ will be able to handle that to perfection. A lot what he did early in his career in Seattle. Well, I, I agree with you. But don't underestimate Mike Tomlin. If Russ has a hot hand, Mike will will okay or green light throwing the course, football because you, listen, Roethlisberger, they used to throw up more than anybody did, of right? Course. They throw fifty passes a game. No problem at all throwing yeah. fifty balls a game when you when it calls for that. But it's not something that they are going to go into a game plan saying. And you got to also know who Mike Tomlin is, where he started his professional coaching career under coach Tony Dungy. Mm -hmm. And what does Dungy want to do? He want to do Dungy ball. <laughs> you know, he's run, 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 kick a field goal. Run, mm -hmm. run, run, kick a field goal. If we win 9-3, so be it. And you, that's you Mike Tomlin. You were a receiver on that team. Yeah, it's just... And that, that doesn't fly <laughs> yeah, for that, you, It right? doesn't matter. I was the one getting the touches, yeah. so hey, it's okay. you got a ring because of yeah. it. Yeah, well, we right? threw the ball a little bit more. We threw the ball a little bit more in crucial situations. It just was a different, different mindset. But Mike Tomlin has the mindset of running the football, Okay, allowing my quarterback to do certain things and not lose the football game, but help us win it by protecting the football and not giving it away to the other team. If you look at Russ's numbers 
from last year, his numbers wasn't god awful. Mm -hmm. They were fine. If 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 in fact Pittsburgh gets what Russ did for Denver last year mm -hmm. in their quarterback play skip, yeah, they're gonna make some noise in the they AFC. Will make noise. If he just do exactly what he did in Denver with that football team in Pittsburgh, we'll be talking about the Steelers late in January. Yeah. Unfortunately, as you pointed out. There is yeah. this guy, Lamar Jackson, there's this guy, Joe Burrow, and there's this guy, Deshaun Watson. It, it, it's, <clears throat> it, you can argue, it's, uh, it's got to be the best quarterback division in football, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think. It, it was the West, but no, he's, he's out of the West now. The Raiders doesn't have a quarterback. Yeah, it is, because the a AFC East, there's nothing in New England. See what let's see what New England gets. Because Tua, Aaron Rodgers, and Josh Allen, yeah, those fair. three are pretty good yeah. quarterbacks. Well, and let's gonna, see what New England well, gets. Well, they're gonna get Drake May or whoever they pick with the third pick. Whoever maybe falls if that, to them. May, maybe, maybe they don't pick. Maybe they move down. Maybe they trade for Justin Fields and he goes to New England maybe. and they take, yeah, who knows what they might do. Yeah. The other thing that strikes me right between the eyes in a good way is. The AFC is so loaded with star quarterbacks, while the NFC is still pretty wide open, which gives me and my team some sliver of hope, because you, especially in the NFC, as, as much as I'm down on Dak Prescott, when I look at the rankings of NFC quarterbacks, Dak's right up there near the top because it's just wide open. It, it's why Baker Mayfield, we're going to talk about Not him in a sure moment. there's any yeah. quarterback in the NFC that I would rather have the Dak Prescott. Okay, but it's it's a fair point because are you sold on Brock Purdy yet? Because I yeah, I think I'm sold I, on him, but know. I'd rather have I'd rather have yeah. Dak Prescott than Brock Purdy, even though I like Brock Purdy. Okay, and you look around, and it's Jared Goff, and it's still Matt Stafford, who you, you, I still honor Matt Stafford. Yeah, but he's he's yeah <laughs> at any at any moment, you know, he may just fold okay. at any moment because he's always injured. All right, you know. And you got Jalen Hurts, and he had his moments, and then they fell apart, and you discount him a little bit because they lost six of their last seven. And yet, I look at the other side of the ledger in the AFC, you just added Russell Wilson to that division. Yes. And my God. Yeah, just there, there, like... there, 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 there's four to seven, eight, nine, ten. There's 10 quarterbacks in the AFC. Oh. There's 10 of them in the AFC yeah. that can play, that yeah. you look at and you go, oh, yeah, they, and they can play. We're about to talk about Baker Mayfield, and all of a sudden I look at Tampa, and I, I think I think they're a really good football team, and they kept their, their big pieces intact. So all of a sudden you say, or they, they're definitely the favorite to win that division, but they're a player, you know. They're they're going to well, be a factor. On what, it depends on what Atlanta does yeah. at the quarterback spot. Are they going after Kirk Cousins? Or yeah. Are they going to spend the money to because they got a nice young team with a new head coach and Raheem? So I'm not ready to just give Tampa Bay the division, depending on what happens at mm. the quarterback spot in Atlanta. Okay, I'm ready to give it to Tampa, and that's what we're going to talk about in just a moment. Thanks for watching, undisputed fans. Do you want more highlights from the show? Make sure to click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from Undisputed.